If you look around and try to guess where I am right now, the obvious guess would be that I'm in Korea. But you'll probably be surprised, unless you watch my channel on a regular basis, that I'm still in China. In an area called Yenbian. Previously in another video I talked about Dandong, one of the most famous Chinese North Korean border cities. Dandong is more famous, but in my opinion, Yenbian is way more interesting. Yenbian is considered one of China's autonomous regions. Autonomous region refers to an area that has more self-governance than most of the other areas of China. It still means they have to follow the rules of Beijing, but it also means that they're given the authority to make their own laws. Within Yenbian, I went to the most populated city called Yenji. In Chinese, the people of the Korean ethnic minority are called Chaoxian people. And that's also the name of North Korea, the country, Chaoxian. Chao refers to the Joseon dynasty from when Korea was its own whole country. And Xian refers to fresh, tasty, or delicious. South Korea in Chinese is known as Han Guo or Han country. I looked up Han in the dictionary to see what it meant and it said a surname or the name for South Korea. So following Chinese history and culture, Chaoxian people are what feel like real Koreans, whereas South Koreans kind of just feel like westernized Koreans. Which is the complete opposite of Western culture, which says South Koreans are the real Koreans and North Koreans are the brainwashed slaves completely devoid of meaningful culture. But this is part of why Yenbian is such an interesting place. It's become like a haven of traditional Korean culture. Some Korean traditions are easier to find here than in the other Koreas. For example, dog meat. This place is called Pet Coffee and they use a dog as their logo. And this place around the corner sells dog soup with rice. As gross as it seems from a Western perspective, dogs have been a normal, socially acceptable source of meat for thousands of years here. This is not the same thing as the dog meat festival in Guiling where they just torture animals for flavor. These are animals that are farmed as meat animals and are sold alongside pork, beef, chicken, and kimchi. I do realize that some people may still find this absolutely repulsive, and even having had the opportunity, I still couldn't bring myself to eat it. But it's not like they're killing people's pets. All animals could be pets that people get attached to. Judgment should come down to whether or not you're comfortable eating meat. But still, when I see red container dog sauce, green container beef sauce, I'm going green. <laughs> so after seeing all these ethnic minority traditions, I bet you're wondering, how does the Chinese government feel about this place? I'm sure you've seen that China has an interesting relationship with their ethnic minorities. On the one hand, average Chinese people praise minorities for their differences. Their unique cultures and backgrounds are underlined on TV shows and in tourism promotions. There is no doubt that Chinese culture as a whole is proud of its ethnic minorities. Finding themed restaurants that serve food from ethnic cultures is really common. Sometimes they're tourist traps and other times they're directly catering to their own people, but in both cases they are encouraged and loved. But having such a diversity of cultures in such a homogenous society means that they're administering regions that don't feel a direct connection to the majority culture, which could stand in the way of Chinese nationalism, which is why they push Mandarin Chinese in these areas to get the minorities to associate more with the Han Chinese population. It's hard to say, you're Chinese, you're one of us. But you're also different and you speak a different language and have different cultural traditions that are weird and foreign to us and we're going to treat you like a novelty and take pictures of you and show them to our friends on our little red book. It's a Chinese social media app. It has nothing to do with the Mao book. Speaking of Mao book, I actually have a dope copy of that. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm way off topic here. Subscribe or join my channel for a video about this thing later. Diversity works in the United States. Well, kind of. 
because our culture in essence is just a melting pot of other cultures. Being from and participating in other cultures is being American. Side note. Speaking of melting pot culture, cultural appropriation is not a real thing. There is only cultural appreciation done either respectfully or disrespectfully. When done respectfully, it is culturally appropriate appreciation. When done disrespectfully, it is culturally inappropriate appreciation. Moving on. In Yenti, standardized big city things like trash cans will only have Chinese and English text, but local things like park signs will be in Korean and Chinese. Some things seem to be aimed specifically at the Mandarin-speaking majority, like this sign outside a traditional market left over from COVID times that says, no entry if you have a yellow health code. All market patrons must wear a mask. Do not spit on the ground. But then you'll find things like the respect the line order propaganda that you see all over Shenzhen, but translated in Korean. You can also expect to see other standardized big Chinese city things like electric BYD buses, luck and coffee, and an abundance of English training centers, each of which remind you that you're not actually in Korea. You will see things here like Christian churches, a South Korean staple, but with government signs placed out front to explain how to identify and what to do if you discover a cult or cult-like activities. The Chinese government wants its citizens to first have allegiance to the flag before any other powerful idea. If one identifies as a communist party member that practices Christianity, that's fine. But if one identifies as a Christian that practices communism, that's bad. Thus, the Chinese government walks a fine line between we love your ethnic culture and don't let it take priority over Chinese interests. Huge platforms like Douyin, the Chinese TikTok, that have an extraordinary amount of influence tend to err on the side of caution and just actively de-boost any videos that are not in Mandarin Chinese. This is also why whenever you see strong cultural values in China, like at this local park in the NC, where everyone was dressing up in native traditional clothing and playing traditional music, you can be certain to find some nationalism close by. But this is why it's so fascinating to explore a place like Yenti. It's the only place that I know of where I can get North Korean barbecue and live. It's such a unique culture clash, like walking into a McDonald's in China for the first time where everything is familiar, but also somehow completely different at the same time. It's always cool to see a place that evolves with modern culture, but then still keeps its soul. Yenbian is a good place. Pretty cool.